Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my September book haul. September. If you guys recall, I have been on a book buying restriction where I've been trying to limit my book purchasing to just my monthly book depository order um, until Christmas. And I was really, really, really committed to that goal. However, I failed and failed spectacularly pretty much in September. So let's jump straight in and talk about all the books. We will, of course, start off with all the library books that I picked up in the month of September. The first book that I picked up in the month of September was Between Georgia by Jocelyn Jackson in this really hideous edition. And it's also a um, large print edition as well, if you can see that. So Jocelyn Jackson is an author that I've read two books from so far this year, and I've really enjoyed both of them. Um, this is her second book that she published, I believe. Um, I'm not 100% clear on what it's about. It appears to be about a woman who has two families, and it says here, um, the frets who got her and raised her right, and the crab trees who lost her and won't forget how they were done wrong. So I'm not sure if that means that she was adopted, but the family maybe who put her up for adoption wasn't happy about it. I'm not really sure. And then it says, in, in between Georgia, so I think in between, sorry, between is the name of the town, population 90. Now, holy shit, is that a small town? A feud that began the night Nonny was born is escalating and a random act of violence is about to ignite decades of family secrets. Like I said, I've enjoyed both of um, Jocelyn Jackson's other two books that I've read, so hopefully I really enjoy this one as well. Next from the library, I picked up two graphic novels. First off, I picked up Paper Girls, Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn. Who else is this by? Uh, it's... Brian K. Bonnie is the writer, Cliff Chiang is the artist, Matt Wilson does the colours, and Jared K. Fletcher does the letters. So this is volume one, as I mentioned. This I've heard quite a bit about on book two. It gets very mixed reviews. Um, it's basically about a group of girls in the 80s who have a paper route, and then something weird happens, and I believe it's got quite a sci-fi bent to it. I'm not sure if I'm going to like this, like I've mentioned, because it does get quite mixed reviews, but I'm, I saw that my library had the first volume, so I'm interested to give it a go. The second graphic novel that I picked up is Volume 7 of Giant Days. I adore this cover. I think it is so great. I can't wait to read this um, because I love this graphic novel series. Really excited to continue on. I then also picked up three more Babysitter's Club books. So I picked up Book 11, which is Christy and the Snobs. Book 12, which is Claudia and the New Girl. And Book 13, which is Goodbye, Stacey, Goodbye. Um, now... I have decided, I think I've mentioned on my channel already, that I'm going to um, not request as many of these, but I've requested these kind of before I decided that. I think I'm going to try to keep maybe the next five instead of I was originally planning to have the next ten, which is just proving to be too many to read I'm in a month with all the due dates that come up. So I probably won't, I've got quite a few of these out at the moment, so I probably won't request any for a little while, but I do have books, what did I say, 11, 12, and 13 to get through. And the final book that I picked up from the library is Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper. This is the next classic that I plan to read. Um, I read Watership Down um, last month, and that was the last one classic that I had. So I had a look through my library's classic section and decided to give this one a go. Um, I'm, I believe this is about a white frontiersman and two Mohican Indians. I'm, I apologize as well if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. And... They are friends, and then there's two um, British girls who are, I think, kidnapped, and then the white frontiersmen and the two Mohican Indians, um, which I also don't know whether, like, I'm saying Indians because it's in the blurb, but I, from what I understand, that is not an appropriate term. Um, but obviously this was published, when was this published? 1956, I think maybe, was when the book was originally... That can't be right. I have no idea. I can't figure out when this was published. I mean, maybe it was 1956. I don't... I'm not clear. Um, the cover is also really kind of confronting already. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but I'm going to give it a go. Next, we'll touch on the ebooks that I purchased in the month of September. So I did purchase five ebooks this month, or this past month. The first of those was An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is a fairly recent-ish YA release. It's a YA fantasy novel. It's about a girl who, in the world that she lives in, there are fae. 
and she if they can't create I think they can't create something like that and she is a portrait painter and she paints a I think it's her Faye Prince's portrait however she paints human sorrow in his eyes which is like a big no-no because they are not allowed to express human emotions and so he comes to collect her and take her back to his world as some form of punishment something like that it got fairly mixed reviews some people seem to really love it um, and some people didn't enjoy it as much. Um, I was definitely intrigued by it. I marked it as to read a little while ago and I saw it was on sale this month on um, Kindle for $2.99. So I did purchase that one this month. Next, I have three just like self-published books that were free on Kindle that I was interested in this month. The first of those is Murder at Flaxton Isle by Greg Wilson. This one is an adult mystery and it's about a group of friends who haven't seen each other in about 10 years. I believe they all graduated from university about 20 years prior and they are having like a reunion at this like rented lighthouse on an island I think. And then I think it says that one of them has a more sinister agenda and not everyone is going to get off the island alive. That just to me sounds delightful. Hopefully it's a lot of fun. The next one is 10 Below Zero by Whitney Barbetti. This one is a new adult romance um, and I was intrigued by the cover. I thought it was quite pretty and it is a standalone. A lot of the new adult romances that I find that are for free are always parts of series, but this one from what I can tell is a standalone. So it's a new adult romance and it follows a girl who is a survivor of some kind of attack. I think it says that she's covered in scars from her attack. I'm not sure of the nature of the attack. And then I believe that she meets a boy who is dying and I think um, he helps her rediscover living, that type of thing. And obviously a romance is going to ensue. Um, it just sounded pretty intriguing. Like I said, the cover is really what drew me in and it was free on Kindle. And my final free ebook that I purchased is Dollhouse by John Hunt. This one is an adult horror mystery and I'm actually going to read you the synopsis of this one because it's very short. The synopsis just says, Olivia is excited for university. She will be on her own in a new place, hopeful to meet new friends. On the night she moves in, she is taken off the street by two masked men. She is placed in a room which is little more than a cell. A pink cell. A room made for a doll. She is now part of their collection. Hmm. That sounds very sinister and very interesting. And the final ebook that I purchased in the month of September was The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. This is another one that I saw on sale. I believe this one was $1.99. And this one is an adult thriller. It's about a woman who is driving one day and she's on like a like country road or something and it's there's a big storm going on and she sees a car pulled over and a woman and she decides not to stop and offer help and then I think she hears the next day that the woman uh, was murdered. Um, I'm kind of interested in this one. This one gets, I think this is probably B.A. Paris' one that gets the most negative reviews, but I'm interested in it. I always love thrillers, so I'm interested to give this one a go. Now moving on to the physical books that I purchased in the month of September. So first off, we have my monthly book depository order. So the first thing that I purchased is Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the Hufflepuff hardcover edition. In the previous month of August, I did purchase the paperback edition but I did order this hardcover edition from Book Depository. It is so beautiful. We have it's just black with the gold underneath and it has the sprayed um, pages. I am the back cover I'll see if I can show you hold on one second is it came from Book Depository. I don't think you can see on camera it's really dirty um, but I think I'm going to be able to clean that up and it'll hopefully come up really nice and I'm excited to add this to my Harry Potter collection. I then received What's a Girl Gotta Do by Holly Bourne. This is the third and final book in, I think it's called the Spinster Club trilogy. Um, I'm not 100% clear on exactly what these are about. I believe it's a YA, it's just YA contemporary and it's supposed to be quite feminist. I'm not sure of the exact plots, but um, I do own the first two books and this is the final one and they have very nice bright spines, which are all going to look really nice together on my bookshelf. So yeah, I'm excited because anything that's um, really feminist, I'm always interested to read. And the final book that I purchased from the monthly book depository order is Beautiful Broken Things by Sarah Bernard. This book is so pretty. Um, this is definitely one that once I've read it, it's going to have the cover forward on display. It is so beautiful. This is a YA contemporary that focuses mainly on friendship. I believe it's to do with two friends and a new girl comes to their school and about what happens in their kind of friend um, friendship dynamics. The last sentence of the synopsis is, and no one can break your heart like a best friend. 
I am very, always interested in this type of story. Friendship themes is basically one of my fave things ever to read in books and especially friendships and friendship breakups um, because I think it is something that can be so prevalent in teenagers lives something I definitely experienced as a teenager so I'm really 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 excited to read this I think I'm really going to enjoy this one so next I have a pile of books I was out with my mum one day and we were in the shopping center and there was one of those kind of pop-up stalls like bookstores and at first I didn't think there'd be much there because I see a lot of pop-up bookstores and they normally have very limited books that I'd be interested in. It's normally a lot of cooking books and memoirs and children's books. Um, but I went over to have a look and there was a lot there that I was interested in and everything was $3. I was so excited and I ended up purchasing 12 books. So the first one that I picked up is Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin. This is a book that I've heard a bit about on booktube um, and I believe it's about a girl who has an affair with a congressman, um, very reminiscent of the Bill Clinton, Monica Lewinsky um, scandal. And then I think it's several years after that affair has happened and we just follow her and I think several other women and just follow how that has affected her life. Um, very interested. It sounds like a very intriguing premise. And the people who I know who have read this who have really, really enjoyed it. I next picked up Dating You, Hating You by Christina Lauren. I have never read a Christina Lauren book, but she's very popular on BookTube. I'm actually not 100% clear on what this one is about. All I know is that it's a new adult romance, but I'm interested to give it a go. I then picked up Without Merit by Colleen Hoover. I believe this one is YA, and I think this one got pretty poor reviews, but I am interested in Colleen Hoover just generally. I've only read her Slammed trilogy, but I do want to read everything from her. Um, so I just saw this and decided I might as well pick it up while well, it's only $3. I then picked up This Is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. This is one that I've already read. I was so excited when I saw this there. I read this earlier in the year. It's one of my five star books of the year, one of my very few five star books of the year. This one is about a family who have five boys. The youngest boy, however, um, believes that he is a girl. Um, well, sorry, she is a girl. Um, and it's about the family and their story. It's told from the perspective of the parents. It is um, own voices for that representation. The author does have a transgender child. Um, this was an amazing, amazing read. I'm actually planning to lend this to my mom so that my mom can read this. But I wanted to haul it for you guys first. So I was, like I said, I was just so excited to see this there. Next, we have one of the only books that I picked up that I had never, like I didn't know anything about, but I was intrigued by the cover. This is Indelible by Adelia Saunders. So I thought this cover was really pretty. And then I read the synopsis, and this sounds so interesting. It's about a girl who has an un Magdalena. She has an unsettling gift. She sees the truth about people written on their skin, names, dates, details, both banal and profound. And her only relief from the onslaught of information is to take off her glasses and let the world rece um, recede. She then meets a boy, and her name is written on his skin. Um, I don't think it's just a romance, though, because it says that... Um, she gets involved in in his life and gets drawn into his family drama, which began over more than half a century before with his father who was abandoned as a baby. It, it just goes on. It just sounded really, really interesting. That whole premise that she can see details about people's lives written on their skin, I just thought was so intriguing. It sounds very, very interesting. I then picked up The Party by Elizabeth Day. This is one that I saw and I knew was a book that I'd previously marked as to read on Goodreads. I believe this is kind of a literary thriller. I think it is about two couples and one of them goes to the other's birthday party but there's something kind of, there's some tension between them simmering under the surface and it all kind of blows up at this party. I think. I just remembered that this is something that I'd wanted to read and I was excited when I saw it there for only $3. Next I picked up The Telling by Alexandra Sirui. Um, this I was very excited to see there as well. I have wanted to read all of Alexandra Sirui's books and I actually have I, her debut, I think it's The Creeping, is on my wish list. So when I saw this one there I immediately snapped it up. I don't know what this is about. I just read the synopsis and I'm still very vague on what this is about. All I know is that it's a YA mystery thriller type of book. Very excited to get my hands on this. I then picked up Alex Approximately by Jen Bennett. This is a YA contemporary that I've heard a bit about on booktube. It's got a bit of the theme of, what's that movie? Oh, You've Got Mail. Um, I've heard mixed things about this one and I'm actually not sure this is one that I'm going to like, but it's a book that I'd heard of and it was $3. Next I picked up Stags by M.A. Bennett. 
Again, this is one that I had heard of and I knew was a YA thriller. I'm always interested in that. It says on the front, nine students, three blood sports, one deadly weekend. I don't know anything more than that, but that sounds very intriguing. I then picked up The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. This is probably the one that I was most excited to see there. This book is on, was on my book depository wish list. Really excited to see this there. This one is about a small town where there is like three witches who were, sorry, there were three sisters who were sentenced to death for witchery and were drowned in uh, the lake or whatever it is. And they come back each year or I don't know if it's every year or every however many years and try to take three boys' lives. Something like that. I don't really know. I'm not clear exactly on the details. I don't need to be. I'm very, very interested in the story. I feel like I'm really going to love this. I was so excited to see this for $3. Next, I picked up History Is All You Left Me by Adam Silvera. Again, I was excited to see this there. I've read um, They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Really, really liked it. Um, this one is about a boy whose ex-boyfriend recently died and I believe it's about him forming a friendship with uh, the ex-boyfriend's current boyfriend at the time of his death and it's about their friendship and their relationship. I said I really enjoyed Adam Silvera's other book so again I had to pick this up. And the final book that I picked up for three dollars in case you couldn't tell I was really excited that these books were three dollars was Dead of Winter by Cressley Cole. This is the third book in the uh, Arcana, Arcana, Arcana? Chronicles. Um, I have the first book. And when I saw this, I recognized that it was one of the books from that series and I just decided to grab it. Um, I now have books one and three, but I will eventually probably purchase the other books in the series so that, that I can eventually read it. I don't, can't remember exactly what this is about. I believe it's YA Paranormal. I just, like I said, I just picked, grabbed this one because it was a book in a series that I didn't own, but I owned the first one. You know what I'm trying to say. Next I have If I Die Before I Wake by Emily Kosh. This one is very interesting. It's basically about a boy who's in a coma. However, he's aware and he hears his family debating whether to turn off his life support and telling his girlfriend that she needs to move on, etc. But he begins to suspect that the accident that put him here wasn't really an accident. So I presume it's about him trying to figure out what happened to him, but while he's in a coma. That sounds very, very interesting. Um, and I, I do like the colour aesthetic of this cover as well. But yeah, very interested to read this one. And the final one that I received from my mum is The Trap by Melanie Rabe, Rabe? I'm not sure how to pronounce that. This one sounds very interesting as well. This one is about a woman who 12 years previously her sister was murdered and I believe she saw the killer as the killer escaped but the killer was never found. However, like I said, it's been 12 years and she's watching TV one day and she sees the man, the perpetrator, on TV. He is now a famous TV journalist. She is a writer and she knows that no one will believe her if she accuses him. So she sets up a trap, hence the title. She writes a novel called Blood Sisters about the unsolved murder of a young woman and agrees to give just one interview at home to the only person who knows more about the case than she does. But is he really the killer or is she losing her mind? Again, super intriguing plot. Really excited to get to this. So when I originally tried to set myself the book buying restriction, which I obviously failed on anyway... When I set that, I had two books in mind that were going to be exceptions to that rule if I ever saw them like out and about, like in the wild. And I did happen to see one while I was out shopping um, during the month, so I bought it, and that was Toil and Trouble, 15 Tales of Women and Witchcraft, edited by Jessica Spotswood and Tess Sharp. This is probably my most anticipated book of the entire year. It's a short story collection, an anthology that's all just about women and witchcraft. I haven't really heard anyone talk about this. I don't know whether the re reviews have been positive, um, but I'm so excited to read it. We have stories in here from Anna Marie McLemore, Jessica Spotswood, Brandy Colbert, Robin Talley, Nova Rensuma, Tess Sharp, Taylor K. Mejia, I don't know how to pronounce it, Andrea Kramer, so many more. I'm really, really excited that I have my hands on this. So that's it. Those are all of the books that I acquired in the month of September definitely failed on my book buying restriction this month. Hopefully I can still stick to it for at least October and November um, before we head into Christmas because my TBR is just really, really out of control like it really is. But I'm really excited about all of these books. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you picked up any awesome books in September. Were you guys on any kind of restriction or ban? How are you guys doing with it? Did you fail as hard as I did? I would love to know. It would make me feel better about myself. 
And please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. But that is all I have for this video today. Bye, guys.